That's it. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to introduce our next speaker. Okay, our next speaker, um, Professor Dr. Um, Mercy Obey. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, okay, right. Permit me to invite a wonderful mm -hmm. sister, mother, auntie, and also a great personalities in the society, most especially in Africa, Nigeria. Professor Mercy Ovukere Obe. She is a self-motivated, experienced educationist, industrialist, as well as critical, creative, and reflective thinker and developer. Dr. Mercy is also an excellent communicator and motivator with great passion to impart and enhance higher thinking skills to develop the minds of youth, we youth, to, to develop youth as well as adults. Dr. Mercy is also the prime mover with strong personalities and character, adventurous, anal analytical, collaborative, diplomatic, and very goal director and directed. Dr. Mercy also is working or has studied from University of Nigeria, Unsuka, University of Bini, Bini City, and also St. Michael Teacher Training College, Midwest College, Efuru. She also works at Ministry of Education, Bender State, and also a classroom teacher, excellent international school, Sapele, Preparators, Vitri School of Science and Creativity, and also Thinker Skills Limited. She is the Consultants and CEO of Consultant Center for Critical and Creative Thinking, developed in Africa, CCCTDA, the president. What can I say about this wonderful leader in the society? She is a great learner. Despite the fact that it's the first time of her joining YYCI, masterclass or conference or event, she decided that she just don't want to come here to teach, to speak, to learn. She also wants to come here to learn from others. And she's been with us since Monday, receiving and receiving and receiving, drinking and eating all the food being delivered on this platform. Here we are, we want to appreciate Reverend Professor Apabio that recommended our wonderful speaker to come and speak to us on this platform. I believe we are all ready. So let's welcome Professor Dr. Mercy O. Obey to the platform. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope I can do this. I'm a learner in uh, ICT, so I hope I'm doing the right thing. Are you seeing me? Yes. Yes, I'm doing the right thing. Okay. Please. Uh, don't hesitate to correct me where I'm wrong, because uh, <laughs> there are people that have been doing these things for me, but today I'm all alone with it. I have to face it. Uh, thank you so very much, my dear sister, Prof. Dr. Queen Elizabeth. Um, you have been so, so, so amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you. I've really learned 
for these days that I've been with you, I've learned. And uh, I haven't listened to the speakers since yesterday. And today, wow, I feel I'm a child just newly born, going to face the wall. So I want you to take me as such and know that I'm in the mix of experienced people. And uh, uh, I'm going to be learning and be teaching. So please pardon my mistakes. I want to specially appreciate our papa here. Our prof is a very unique prof to me and to the entire world of uh, World Organization of Ambassadors and many others. It's a very busy person. Uh, Prof, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so elated. I'm so, I don't know the English I should put together to appreciate you this afternoon. I didn't know I have such a wonderful person around me who can speak the truth of the heart. I fell in love with you today because you spoke the truth. You spoke the heart of those who couldn't speak it. And most people I've been talking with about marriages, I keep saying, we need to touch this area of sex, of romance in marriages because it's breaking many homes down. But today you did justice to it. I wish the whole world could listen to you today. And I want to really plead with uh, our host to make this video very much available to those who can have it. Because God is using you to heal so many lives that you don't even know. God bless you, sir. Thank I you appreciate you. I thank appreciate you. you. And thank you for connecting me to this platform. My being connected here is a stepping stone. And I'm very much happy to belong. Just as I'm saying thank you to Professor Queen Elizabeth Lucas. So I'm telling you thank you for being the connecting road. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I have said that uh, my topic today is hinged on the uh, team. And we all know that the team of this um, week's um, masterclass is nothing more than what God wants. Transformation, transformation, transformation. Transformation, as I see it, came from God. From the day God decided to create the earth, transformation is the word that settled in his heart. Because Genesis chapter 1 says, and the spirit of God started moving, and he saw the need for transformation. Things were in a particular shape, but God who still created the world, thought of how he can transform these same things to a new level. And God started the work of transformation when he says, let there be, there has been, up to today. It took a whole six days to bring about Transformation that nobody, no scientist, no body in this world who spend the entirety of his life to bring about. That is what he did for us. So God, transformation is God's own divine uh, 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 project, is God's own insight, is God's original and ongoing business. Even up to this moment, God is still doing the work of transformation. He is spiritually doing it and is physically doing it. And you may ask me, how is God doing it physically? It is through somebody like 
Professor Queen Elizabeth Lucas, Professor Annie Fogg Akwabio, and many others that is using to speak, both in this platform and other platforms, and others in various diverse uh, uh, programs that they've allowed themselves to be used. So we must appreciate God. It is God's plan and purpose for man to be a transformer, to continue with the work. That is what he told us in Genesis. He said man is to continue with what he was doing. But one thing I will say before I move on, transformation is the change of mindset. If when God moved around the world, he saw that what he did before was okay, nothing would have changed. There won't have been a seas, a, a light in the day, light in the night. No, everything would have remained the way it was. But he saw a challenge, he saw a need. And so transformation had to come until you see a need, until you see a gap, you cannot fall into the role of, of transformation. So God made man to change the mindset of his fellow man. And I want to also say God is the God of standards. Prof has told us a lot today. God is the God of standard. So everything about transformation has standards. So we need to also look at God's own standard because what is causing the world to collapse before our eyes today is lack of standards. Yes, God has given us the willpower to transform the world into what we desire, but it should be according to the transformation standard of God. So where we don't do it, then something is going wrong. And we must also note, it is worth noting, that there can be transformation without the word relationship. There cannot be transformation without the word relationship. So when we use the two words, transformation and relationship, they are very powerful words that is dearest in the minds of God, in the mind of God. Both God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They started relationship. If they didn't start the relationship, there won't be anything like God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they started the relationship, and the relationship is nothing else than to bring about transformation. He has to use a medium, and that is man. That is why he said, let us create that man who can continue with the work of transformation on earth upon all that we have created. And he first asked man to give names to all that he created. That was the first transformatory assignment. So as introduction, I want to say, because today's topic is relationship in leadership, relationship in leadership. I'm going to focus more on that angle. Thank God for the robust teaching we have gotten today. In fact, I'm so blessed and I wish that is the end of the day. So as introduction, transformation is God's own divine project, God's deepest insight, God's original and ongoing business even to this moment. And what is relationship? Relationship, as we have heard over and over and over, is connection. Relationship is the connecting rod between 
people, situation, environments, and so on. So if you can SP the activities of life today, nothing can happen without a relationship. You want to move from um, uh, Nigeria to London, there must be a traveling relationship. You want to eat, there is a relationship between you and the farmer. So there, there are diverse types of relationship all to bring about the satisfaction that God wants man <clears throat> to have upon the earth and to give God the glory over all that he created. So relationship is the connecting rod between people, situation, environment, and so on. And transformation of, I mean, which is, uh, I want to repeat that. Relationship is the connecting rod between people, situation, environment, and so on, and transformation which is a desire, a desired and effective change within that person or group of persons, situation, environment, or whatever you may think about it. What am I saying here? Somebody, when we talk of relationship, two people are involved. Or a person and a situation, they are involved. Or a person and environment is involved because sometimes our relationship expands to animals. That is why we can have domestic animals. They have a <laughs> purpose. And so there is this road connecting the situation and man, environment and man, man to man, in order to bring about a desired goal. So what is it? What is relationship? We know that the relationship came from a Latin word, which is relation or relatio, and it has to do with this connection. Like our prof taught us today, the connection has to be deep. A superficial connection will not give you the, uh, the, the required result as a deep-rooted uh, relationship. So when the, 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 the connection is deep, it brings about a particular behavior between the two persons concerned. Call it a romantic relationship. Call it a father-son-daughter relationship. That is kinship relationship, marriage relationship, call it business relationship, professional relationship. There are diverse type of relationships. That man is a social being. God had to bring that word, relationship. That is relate. From relationship we are getting relate. Connect with, talk with, do something with, generate something with. So we are talking of an assignment, a very big one. And nobody is born into this world to come and sit idle. You are not born to be idle. I had that notion, what can I do? And that is what has limited me to this level I am. I ought to be higher than this. And many people are in the same position because they've not understood the word relationship. They feel that relationship is all about man and woman having affairs. No, the, 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 the master class of today is exposing so much to us and I'm so glad. So because of the relationship, the people consigned they behave, there is a way they behave. So if the relationship is sweet, is good, you know that the, the, the behavior will be smooth, will be 
a happy one will be a positive one. But when the relationship is soured, the likelihood is quarrels, fights, and even killing. And that is what is also happening with the unbelievers of today. Killing, killing, killing everywhere. People are hungry because somebody has forgotten what good relationship is. So he considers for himself or herself, only me, self-centeredness. So what are we saying? We have to have that relationship in order to behave in the positive way to other people, to situations and environment. We have to have a relationship in order to solve problems surrounding us. Everywhere you have a lot of problems. The relationship is a driving force to make you active in your environment, to make you perform and bring about solutions to your environment, to somebody's life, to your church, and so on and so forth. Next, let's look at what constitutes a relationship according to our own side. But these things have been mentioned. Professor Patrick Mongetka has already mentioned almost everything I have to say there. Because the, the definition of relationship is almost the same everywhere. Excepting that when you talk of the context in which it is used, then a word or two more may come or be subtracted. So he has done a lot. And I want to say that relationship, relationship is goal-oriented. What do we mean by being goal-oriented? There is a focus. There is something your relationship must attain. Why are you in this relationship? Why do I make Mr. John my friend? Why do I make Professor Queen my friend? There is already a relationship. Though somebody introduced me to her, she accepted the relationship. There is a goal. So why did you go to the school you went to? Right from the day you agreed to be registered in that school, you established a relationship. So there is a goal for every relationship there is a goal. So it is goal-oriented and it must be leading us to somewhere. That relationship you are in, whether to a friend, to a neighbor, to a man, to a woman, to a business setup, to your boss or whatever, must lead you to somewhere. If a relationship is not leading you to somewhere, then it is not a relationship. There is no relationship there. And that is where anger takes over. Misgiving, mistrust, and all others, negative things, negative vibes, they take place because the actual relationship that ought to exist is not there. And the relationship is also, must also be followed with understanding. Understanding is a key characteristic of relationship. You must understand me. I must understand Professor Quinn. I must understand Professor uh, um, Aquabio. For us to relate at the level of our relationship and at the context or domain of our relationship, so understanding, we bring about what we call in critical thinking, metacognition. Metacognition is your, the ability to have to be introspective, the ability to look inward and know what you 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 you, you can do, your your weaknesses and your strengths, your abilities, your experiences. What if I cannot speak in this uh, uh, platform? And Prof invited me to be here. Will I just 
take my paper and come and blah, 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 and go. Before I accepted, I decided that I must come and see and learn and estimate the people who are coming to speak and what they are talking about. And I've come to see, I've come to hear, and I've come to, 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 to know, to assess my own self. And I know that before them, I'm a child who is learning. But somebody may be here who will say, ah, I know all these things. The day you stop, you stop learning, the day you stop asking for another person's opinion, the day you stop learning, from that day, you start moving backward. They will normally say you start dying. So in a relationship, we have what we call mutual impact. Just as I can, uh, I can look inward at myself, I can be introspective. The other person should also look at his own part. And then me, I should study my partner that I'm in relationship with, I'm friendly with. And to know what the person likes and what he does not like. What we build up that person. How can I behave in a way that will be of benefit to that person? So mutual impact. You impact me, I impact you. I'll be looking at Queen Mother here, uh, uh, Professor uh, Queen Elizabeth Lucas, and I've been admiring her. I've been admiring her confidence in running this program. And I ask myself, if I sit there in her position, can I do as well? So I've learned from her. Yeah, she's my leader because... I can, I can learn from her confidence. And then she gave the life story to us two days back. And I was almost in tears. And I said, oh, the devil is wicked. One thing I want us to know today, the devil doesn't want, he knows where God has put a star upon your head. Where God has equipped you with what it takes to transform the world. He knows it and he doesn't want it. So he set traps so that you die early or you get frustrated, you get discouraged, disappointed, and then you can't do anything. You can't move forward. You can't impart life. You can't transform anybody because to yourself you say, I'm not good. Even you talk of trying to take one's life. I've done it. I've tried to, to take my life. So you can say that for anybody who has something good, let them open their mouth to tell you stories. You will know that the devil knows this person is a danger to my kingdom. Because anything that will transform lives, anything that will transform situation, any anything that we bring about changes in the environment is not the desires of our enemy. Let's move on. So a loving, uh, 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 goal-oriented uh, relationship must also be good at communication, communicating honestly, being able to tell the other person, whether your partner, your friend, your neighbor, your colleague, your, your, your co-worker, your vision, because you must carry a vision. You must carry a goal. So how can you communicate so that these people can carry it along with you? There is no one human being that is an island or a tree in an island. We all need each other to succeed. And that is why we are in a relationship. God needed God, the, Son, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And he said, let us make man like us in our own image. Who has the same spirit of, you know, reconciling and transforming the entire world. Especially after man fell from grace to grace. 
So communication is very important. Communication must be soft, not always harsh, harsh, harsh. Husband and wife talking, they, they don't talk in love except when they want to get married. Like a sister asks, once they've married and the man has seen the nakedness and the woman has seen the nakedness, they begin to talk to each other without respect. Relationship has respect. There must be mutual respect. So a loving relationship is one that is built on trust, mutual respect, and affection. It's relationship where both partners feel so much um, independent to express their feelings openly. They feel safe. They feel independent to express their feelings openly. That is why the, the man can go to the wife anywhere in the kitchen, in the bathroom, anywhere, and give a kiss. The woman can hug the husband and hold the hands anywhere. But beyond this, in the office, the boss and the, and the secretary, they should be safe enough. They should be confident enough and independent enough to explain things that are happening around them and discuss on the level of moving forward, not backward. So I want to also tell you that relationship is very well expressed. A relationship that is not expressed is not a relationship. How will you feel staying in a house with a man who can hardly talk with you? How will you feel staying with a woman whose words are either yes or no, or I don't know? A home where there is mutual understanding and talk, communication, free will, expression, not only the man asking for the woman for, for, for sex, not only the woman asking the man for sex, because there are some families that they think it is only the woman who should do it, or it is only the man who should do it. The other party is too holy to ask for sex. It's too holy to to initiate the kiss or the romance. That is wrong. So it must be expressed, even in the office. I'm not saying expression is that of kisses and romance in the office, but it can be verbal and non-verbal, like our uh, 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 the speaker spoke, told, he told us yesterday, TPS, Professor TPS. It can be verbal and non-verbal communication expressed. When you are annoyed in the office, that is a non-verbal communication. But when you speak out, you are always already communicating verbally, expressing the threats of the relationship. I've said so much about relationship because I have to stop there about relationship for now. Because other speakers have been dwelling much on relationship. Now, we also know that there are types of relationship which we have heard before. We have family relationship, friendship, romantic relationship, business relationship, educational relationship, call it whatever. I've told you that nothing works without a relationship. So anything you are doing that will work is a relationship because it, it is working because there is a good relationship, a positive relationship. So when we talk of, you know, relationship in leadership, we now come to second part of it. What is leadership? Leadership is a type of relationship that is very directional in leading the other person or group in a particular situation, in a given environment to achieving a desired goal. This is my definition, personal. I want to repeat that. Leadership is a type of relationship that is very directional in leading 
the other person or group in a particular situation, in a given environment, I told you it is contextual, to achieving a desired goal. So in leadership, somebody is in front. I want to tell you something about leadership. There is no where you have two persons that one person is not a leader. There is no where you have two, three. Once you are more than one, there is a leader. That is why in marriage, there is a leader. And God made the man the leader. In the class, there is a leader. Somebody must be the prefect or somebody must be the teacher. Somebody must be there in the office. Everybody cannot just be equal. Even if all are equal and sitting in one place, somebody must be given the authority to give instruction, pass instruction, and help others. So you are either a leader or a follower. In life, you are either a leader or a follower. And I've told you that as a leader, you are only expressing a relationship with the other party that is based on a purpose, on a goal, is directional, and is leading the person or group of person to a particular situation or out of a particular situation in a given environment. So what are we talking about? I have told you that relationship is contextual. It is based in a domain. Just as leadership is contextual, I have told you leadership is in the home, is in the office, is in the even in the playground. Look at people playing the football. What happens? There is a leader. So in all walks of life, we have the leader, we have the followership. And then leadership is also the quality or qualities that a party possess that the other party needs and crave for. Did you get me? Leadership is also the quality. See, I am A. The other person who is my partner is B. For B to be in relationship with me, he must see something in me he admires. There must be a motivating factor in me, either the manner I talk or my experiences, the way I handle problems and get solutions, or, oh, she's very beautiful, or one thing or the other. There is something people must see in you to follow you. If you don't have anything in you, which is almost impossible, because God created every man with a gift, with a talent, with a skill. So everyone is equipped to be a leader according to God's own perspective. Everyone is created to be a leader. So if you are not leading, you are seeing something in the other person that you crave for, you desire to have. Therefore, you follow in order that there will be an impartation, in order that that person will impart on you what you are lacking. Can you see the mutuality of, of relationship? So I'm trying to say that in, in, in cases such as love, it takes two to tango. Prof has said so much about love. I feel so inadequate. 
So go to that aspect. But if you say Mr. A lost Miss B and they want to get into marriage, if the two are not in love, the marriage cannot stand. And that is to say, there is nothing one wants to gain from the other. There is nothing one wants to get. I want to tell you something, my dear. Anybody you are, for me, anybody I'm relating with, be you a man, a woman, a child, if there is nothing I can't gain from you, I won't be in that relationship. I will opt out because I'm wasting my time. There must be something in you that draws me close that I want to gain. So I think this is the case with every human being. People want to follow those that have something superior than they themselves. You may have something superior, I may not have it, so I follow you. Me, me I can have something S, and another person doesn't have, so that person will follow me. And that is what, that is the chain of relationship. Chain of relationship. So now, who is a leader? Okay, let me quickly say this, before I go to who is a leader. I wrote here, I say it is what you have, you can give generously. You can't give generously what you don't have. You will be a fake, an imitator, and it won't last. If you are trying to give what you don't have, it will not last. You will fail. So that is why it is better for everyone to be authentic. Be yourself. Admit who you are and be yourself. By the time you are authentic, you will be real and you will give out what you have and you will give it out generously. A lot of people that have gone astray, either in marriage or a workplace or wherever, the problem has been that the relationship is not mutual. They couldn't see what they are in that relationship to get. Again, like as Prof told us, what you seek to get in a relationship is a different. I hope we are all enjoying this, uh, the, the teachings today. Okay, I think it's just the connection. She was going to reconnect back and then we continue. Thank you so much for your patience. We also want to seize this opportunity to welcome Ambassador Olorunbe Ade Natana. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Right, we're just waiting for her. I think it's the connectivity. And definitely she will continue her teaching today. Very powerful teaching. She's going to rejoin us again, and then we can continue. Okay, yes, we are ready. Okay, sorry for that. Sorry for that, please. That's all, that's okay, fine. Okay, so fine. we are going to another part of it, be part of leadership. Who is a leader? A leader must be positive. A leader must be positive. A leader must be confident. I told you that there are values people want to see in you, to follow you. Nobody wants to follow a negative person. There is a lady I'm a bit close to, but I'm only giving some time. Because I, I, I think why I'm there is that she's learning a lot. Most time when you are talking with her, everything she has to say is on the negative. You can't do this. This is wrong. This person is bad. This is that. And I keep changing the narrative. And she will say, thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. So, but I think what is keeping me there is that 
my 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 own part of the relationship is blessing her. So let me see how far it can go. So you must be positive. You must be confident. A leader who cannot who cannot show evidence of confidence, he will always look for another person to do it. That person is not worth following. It's not worth being a leader. It's not worth being in relationship with. It. That is the truth. A leader must be visionary. That we said it before. You must be goal oriented. Where is this relationship leading you to? You must answer that question. From time to time, you must keep as asking yourself that question and answering it. And I decided to take a verse from the Bible this time. If we look at Genesis 13, verse 14 to 16, what did this say? I decided to pick New Living Translation. And I want to quickly read it. It's not long. It said, after Lot had gone, I want to say something. After Lot has gone, you must let go. People will not allow you to move forward. My sister, uh, Professor Queen, God bless you for moving out of those who didn't want you to move forward, who didn't want to encourage you and tell you that you have something unique. Lot represents that thing that wants to pull you back. That lot represents those relationships that want to make you die a premature death and without achieving the purpose why God created you into this world. And so, after Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abraham, he said, look, as far as you can see in every direction, north, south, east, and west, I'm giving at this, I'm giving you this land. I'm giving all this land to you. As far as you can see, as far as you can see, that is vision. That is vision. As far as you can see, the God that created you for a purpose will give you that, that sight so that you can see far. God is not going to force you beyond what you can do. He can make you willing to go extra mile. But once you can set up your eyes and say, I want to be in London, and that is your heart desire, God will make a way. He says he will make a way oh, where God. there is no way. And even where we think there is no way, God knows there is a way. So, we are saying here that if you can see far, there is a God to help you achieve it. And do you know what? He will begin to bring you to a relationship with the people that matters. People that can lead you to that point. He will begin to bring you into a relationship with them. How did I know? Who told me that I will be in relationship today with Professor Queen Elizabeth. But for me to connect with her, he had to connect me with Professor Akwabio. Can you see the web of connection? Because there is a purpose that a Professor Lucas is going to uh, uh, achieve in my life or my relationship with her is going to achieve. But we can't get together except there is somebody else. Are you understanding? And if I follow, trace the history, I didn't just know Professor Akpabio from uh, Adam. I knew him through another occasion. Can you get me clear? Are you hearing me, please? Yes, we can hear you. And we are following you. Okay. Yes. Fine. So let's carry on. So, as far as you can see, there must be a vision. And I want to uh, 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 take something from Warren Bennis. He said, leadership is the capacity to translate a vision into reality. And that is the truth. Leadership is your ability to transfer 
what you have seen in your man's eye, in your mind, that eye on the inside that talks with God, plans with God, what you have seen, your leadership, especially when you find yourself leading others, that means you are not seen for the group. You are seen farther than the group members can see. You are not uh, seen farther, better than the situation is talking about or the environment is talking about. You can see more clearly. You can see more advanced. You can see when people are saying this country is not good. You can see things that are good in that same country. When people are saying, ah, this town, this person is not good, you can see something in that person. And God will say, because you've seen it, I will help you achieve it. So, we have to possess the skills also of critical and creative thinking as leaders. I know Talking about the skills of critical and creative thinking is a topic of another day. But if you are going to be a leader, you must be a critical thinker. And you must be a creative thinker. You must develop these skills. If I have the opportunity sometime in future, maybe I will come up with that. But it will not, time will not allow us to delve critically into these two topics. But critical thinking will help you to evaluate your vision. It will help you to evaluate your vision. It will help you to know whether this is your vision. People can run with it or not. It will help you to know where this your vision will lead you to. That is what critical thinking will help you do. And creative thinking will explain to you or make you understand how you can attain this vision. How you can harness the skills, abilities, experiences of Mr. A, Mrs. B, uh, uh, this person and that person. Harnessing them to achieve positive results that you have seen. And so you have to be a communicator, as I have said. You have to be a problem solver. I want to also tell you something that Steve Jobs said. Give so, yes, Steve Jobs said, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Can, can, you, can you see that? You know I've talked about you are either a leader or a follower. Even among the siblings, there is one who is a leader, there, there's another one who is a follower. So anywhere you go, they will send the questions to you. How do I do this? What do I do in this situation? I don't have money. Send me some money. It's because you have put yourself in the position of leadership. So Job is saying, Steve Jobs is saying innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. I hope that is made clear. A communicator is a good leader. And then you must be a problem solver. You must be resilient. A person of integrity, let your yes be yes and your no be no. When your partner is not there, can you represent him well? What do you say about that partner when he's not there? Are you the one that will backstab or you can defend your partner, whether he's there or not. How do you feel if everybody is throwing stones at your partner, you say it's your partner, and they are throwing those stones because of what you said, because of how you represented that your partner. Are you in relationship? What is your relationship like? So in leadership, you must exhibit integrity. If not, people won't trust you. Your, 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 those who are leading any, any domain, any context, any place, any country you are, people won't trust you 
People want to rely on people and trust people before they can follow them. And we will soon be rounding up. You have to be knowledgeable and full of experience. You can't say you want to lead people and you cannot stand your ground to say, to defend your knowledge. You cannot say, I know it and this is how it is. You can see the speakers. You can see the, 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 the man of God that spoke today, Professor Akwabo. He spoke and he told you for 43 <laughs> He has been counseling on marriage. This is a man of knowledge and experience. Good my internet. I hope my body is not pushing the laptop. Okay, so let me quickly go and round up. And so you have to have good listening skills. That has been mentioned several times. Is it only you that should be listened to? Do you also listen to other people? you are not good at listening to people, you won't be able to solve their problems. You, I, I'm not saying you should solve their problems, but lead them to solve their problems. Help them, direct them, so that they see the need and how to solve the problems. So have good listening skills. You must be flexible. Flexibility is very important for a leader to have. Don't be too rigid. It must be me, me, me. Self-centeredness. It must be done according to my desire. You don't even care how the person who is doing the work feels. It could be your house set. It could be the person doing tailoring within the office. So how do you feel? Then uh, 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 be empathic. Empathy is putting yourself in the shoe of the other person. How does it feel? to work for 12 hours. How does it feel? Even the person you call your slave, how does it feel if you were to be that slave? How will you want to be treated? So empathy is very important. Strong leaders show empathy by recognizing and considering their employer's feelings. Not only employers, your partner's feelings. Whosoever you are in relationship with, having empathy for your team members or your partner means identifying their personal challenges and lead them in making effective decisions. Then the final side. Now, what does relationship in leadership signifies? First of all, can we say there is relationship in leadership and my answer, I say, I see leadership as a strong influence. And that, and that influence is the one which demands a form of alliance, dependence, tie up, and rightfully put a relationship. Rightfully put is called a relationship. So there's relationship in leadership. Without relationship, there can't be leadership. Who are you leading? And how, what is the way you are leading? Because it is the relationship that brings about the way you connect to each other, the way you relate to each other. Leadership as a practical skill and an access door is in tandem with the ability of an individual to influence, lead, and guide other individuals, groups, or teams, or organizations. As an influence of power related, or influence of power relationship, in which the power of one party, which is called the leader, promotes the activities, change, or total transformation in others who are referred to as the followers. So the connecting role, the leader has the power relationship and the follower has the followership relationship. But each of them must 
consider for each other mutually. Because the one who has the power relationship who want to achieve a goal, he sets the goal. The followership relationship want to help the one who has the power relationship to achieve that goal. So in summary, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. That is by John C. Maxwell. I took that as a summary. Instead of going around again, just know that a leader is one who knows the way, knowledge and experience, goes the way, the way you relate, and shows the way how to achieve your goals, the creativity. So in conclusion, conclusively, relationship is living in the heart of people that you meet while leadership is a position that requires the relationship that brings transformation. I want to repeat that. Relationship is living in the heart of people that you meet every day. While leadership is a position that require the relationship that brings transformation. I brought out this by myself. Let's strategically and positively endeavor, please, please, let's strategically and positively endeavor to live in the heart of people as we live, as long as we're in this world. Let's live in the heart of people. Let people get something from us that forever they will remember. And even when we are gone to the beyond, let's do this. In any context we find ourselves, or domain we find ourselves, whether it be in the marriage, family, uh, friendship, place, or worship, schools, organization, or business. That is my submission. And well, I don't know whether I have made any points. You've done but many points. Made, uh, you've made a lot of points. I'm telling you. Let me, let me tell you something, sir. Ma. You finish up I my can't... notebook. Did you see? You finish up my notebook. I have to quickly go and get a, another book. That is how valuable you have taught us. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, no, you don't need oh, to apologize. Wow. I'm learning from wow. you. I have to stand up and look for another paper to me to write yeah. because I finished my notebook. Uh, Professor you. Nada is coming tomorrow to speak. I have to buy another book quickly this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm a great Thank learner. You. Thank you so much, sir. Thank really you. really appreciate, we appreciate so, you. I, know I the can remove this well. so that we see you. I want to be seeing you. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, can I still remain? Yes, you can still remain. You can still okay, remain. We will okay. soon round up because uh, our next speaker is voluntarily because of uh, so many things going on in the background. And okay. also she she couldn't uh, retrieve a PowerPoint, a, a slide. So she has voluntarily um, moved, rescheduled her own time till tomorrow. So, oh, okay. so which is okay as well. But at the same time, if you have any question to ask briefly, can you type it on the chat box or send it to me on yyci.academic.co.uk? Our great speaker is coming back tomorrow again to come and um, share with us or to continue where she paused today, where she put comma today. So she will continue tomorrow. What a great, great, great lessons that we have learned today from our teaching. And I'm sure you've all learned a lot as well from our teaching today. And guess what? She'll be with us tomorrow. Please get yourself ready. And please prepare your questions because tomorrow you are going to ask some more questions. I know the time spent because of so many reasons. We have to round up and also close up for today. Any one or two questions quickly? 
quickly. Professor Nada, question? We can't hear you, unfortunately. Okay, any question? Okay, let me use this. I can't hear you, Professor Nada. We can't. So it's still part of the challenges today. Yes, I know you've met, you've unmute yourself, but I don't know what is going on. But I believe that uh, you'll be able to break through. Yes, okay, do it again now. All right, can, can you speak? We still can't hear you. Okay, we can't hear you at all. So that's part of the challenges she's facing today with the connectivity. And I want to use this opportunity to express my gratitude to Professor Dr. Mercy Obey. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. You've really, really taught us a lot. I like the way you started with transformation. And from transformation, you also spoke about um, relationship. It, it, then from there, you progress to um, leadership. And then you wrap up with, you know, you, know, you wrap up with rela trans, uh, relationship, transformation, and also critical thinking. That's an extra one for us today. Critical thinking and creativity, uh, creative thinking. You really did well. Thank you so much. And please, please, Thank please you. appreciate our appreciate our welcoming. Appreciate our thanks, our gratitude. You know, we really appreciate your time, especially when you've Thank been you. with us. I can see you are a great teacher. You are a great speaker. You are a great learner because I can see the effects, the, you know, from your teaching that you are also a great reader because if you can read John Maxwell's book, you are a great leader because <laughs> <laughs> I also read a lot. My wardrobe is full of books everywhere here. Every corner is books. I, I love reading because he had more knowledge to me. I also want to express my gratitude to our great leaders, my mentees, my ambassadors, my leaders. They keep shining. They, yeah, they are tired at the moment. They need to go and eat and drink and stretch themselves. I can see, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for showing that to me. <laughs> we are releasing you. We will finish up in two minutes. So, yes, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the data you've used. I appreciate everything. So uh, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I also appreciate um, my great leader from Pakistan, Dr. Samina. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, we didn't hear much of you today, so I believe tomorrow. Um, do you want to quickly say something, ma'am, before we go for two minutes? Two minutes. Quickly. I wish we could hear from Professor Nada. But it looks like the connection today is really big challenge for her. But tomorrow, she knows what to do. She's an expert. She's also a president of a uh, research center of IIU. And she is a great educator and ac academician. She's a great professor. So I know she knows exactly what she will do before tomorrow. And she'll be with us full force because we can't hear you. You are speaking, but we can't hear you. <laughs> I know. All right. So, Dr. Samina, can you round up with prayer quickly? Okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day and for all the work and all the messages we have listened today. I pray for Dr. Queen Elizabeth Lucas, for her wonderful vision, give her wisdom and knowledge and multiple sources to grow more physically and financially. I pray for all the speakers, fulfill their needs. May their work be a reflection of your purpose for our life. Grant us the spirit of strong relationship and love Give us wisdom and knowledge to grow forward day by day. I surrender this day, trusting that your will be done in the world as it is in heaven. I say all this 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Samina. And on this note, I would like to quickly express my gratitude to Professor Dr. Mercy Obeng or, and also to all our great speakers, especially my papa, Reverend Professor Apabio, and also um, Professor Dr. Patrick. They spoke earlier on. I really appreciate them and the words that they've deposited into us, increasing our knowledge, updating our knowledge, and also giving us the opportunity to feed our mindset with positive and right information. So I want to say thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sirs. Thank you. And also want to appreciate um, Dr. Samina for being with us today, for our prayers, for our support, and also for learning, because I like the way, I like her enthusiasm, I like the way she is answering, asking questions in case she miss out something. I really appreciate you, ma'am, Dr. Samina. I also want to appreciate Ambassador Comfort. I can see you are a great teacher, a specialist, a great learner, staying in the library to listen to us, to learn to, uh, while you've done a great and you've prepared yourself a good environment. Thank you so much. I also want to appreciate Ambassador Christian, Ambassador Joseph, Ambassador Sarah, Ambassador and um, Engineer um, Wilfred. I want also, I want to invite, uh, uh, appreciate Ambassador Ade Nathaniel. Uh, he is also joining us for the first time. I guess um, he was uh, invited. We appreciate you, sir. And we will love you to come back tomorrow. We might give you the chance to speak to us so that we can welcome you fully. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. I want to appreciate. Thank you, sir. You Thank you so much. And also want to appreciate Professor Nada for the past three hours. She's been trying to connect and connect. It has never happened before. I mean, like I told you, we are dealing with a very crucial, important topic which is re relationship. And so there will be left and right uh, con attack and uh, every, you know, disturbances. And I mean, like I'm telling you, they, they block three times, they block my Facebook since Monday, we've started this program. But you know what? They can only do what they can do and we can do what we can do. And we are not going to stop. We are not going to give up. We are not going to be discouraged. We will keep pressing on because we determined to pass this important information to the minds of millions, millions, so that their relationship can be transformed. So I want to thank you again for staying with me here on the, this platform. Ambassador Kristen, I want to thank you. I want to thank every one of you. And also those that managed to join us on Facebook, despite all this restriction, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And guess what? We also need to express our gratitude to all our enemies. So I will say thank you for those who disturb us. Thank you because you are giving us more ideas to get better. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much. Uh, we are all human beings. So we have to love. We love ourselves. We love God. We love our neighbors. We love our friends, we also love our enemies because you know what? Everybody is going through one thing or the other. So that is why we cannot shy away from that. We have to be empathy in whatever we do, show empathy in whatever we do. And that is why to say that our enemies as well, they deserve our love. They deserve even our prayers to them to be free from every tension they find themselves. We are dealing with love, relationship, friendship, marriage, family. And these are the things that can solve the problem of this world. We need peace in every angle of this nation and even in this world. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if Professor Nada can say something. Professor Nada? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can hear, we can see you opening your mouth, but unfortunately, we can't hear you. 
Okay. So we won't waste time. So please, Professor Nada, please join us tomorrow as you have promised and come and deliver your powerful message to us because we want to learn from you. So on this note, I would like to end this program. Oh my God, we've spent four hours. Wow. We didn't plan to let it be like that, but because of a lot of connectivity. Ambassador Joseph, thank you for coming back. So on this note, Ambassador Joseph, Professor Nada, even though we can't hear your voice, well, Ambassador Comfort, you already know how we operate at the end of every meeting. Ambassador Joseph and Dr. Samina also is our Vice President of YYCI Pakistan, so she knows what we're going to do in a minute now. And the question, because I like questions, the questions I need to ask the floor is, should I end this program today? Can I end this program today? And the answer yes, is... You yes, you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Final question. Can I end this masterclass today? Now. Yes. Yes, you can. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>